All right, let's do this. All right, sweet. What's going on, everybody? Just a quick intro. Um, my name is Fernando Corona, and I run a few different businesses. Uh, I've basically been a side hustler for the past two and a half years. I've explored e-commerce, dropshipping, uh, created a business in sales tax and services, dropshippers. I'm in crypto. I'm an NFT. We own property and real estate. That cash flow is about $2,500 net per month. And getting into Airbnbs, getting into flipping homes. So I've just been that guy who's just tried exploring so much. I uh, bootstrapped all of my businesses and partially I bootstrapped that with credit cards, business credit cards. I've had to create DBAs, create LLCs in Wyoming, create LLCs in Delaware, in California, in Texas, uh, Nevada. So I definitely know um, just... I started asking all the questions about how to start a business, what's the benefits of starting a business, how tax strategies work and all this. I'm just a regular dude who was working W-2, went to college and figured there has to be some, some more benefits that we weren't really given access to in college. And that's what I'm trying to teach right now. So this is Intro to Business 101, why everyone should have a business, even if you don't actually own a business. And I'm actually walking a ton of friends through this right now. And they, they didn't realize a lot of the perks that come with this. A lot of you on this call might be in a similar situation, your W-2 worker, and you have no need for a business because you don't own a business. This is for you. You could be somebody who just started a business, right? You just opened an e-commerce store for drop shipping. This is for you. You could be someone who's actually looking to start a business. I think somebody is looking to start an art business that messaged me earlier. This is for you. So thank you for being on and let's get to it. All right, so why are we here? I mean, everybody I'm sure has one of these things, right? We're here because we want to get our time back, because we want to make more money, because we want to travel. We want to travel at credit card points. We want to travel for free. We want to travel first class. Uh, maybe you want to, yeah, use the time and money to be healthier. You want to spend more time with family. I mean, I'm working from home. I work remotely. I get to travel with my wife and my daughter, and we're going to go to the mountains next week. Um, and then obviously at the very end here, we want to just pay less in taxes which uh, is that's straight up uh, rules of engagement from the rule maker. So I don't know how many of you knew this, but on the IRS website, um, there is, they have a responsibility and they state that their mission statement, this is their mission statement, which usually a company's mission statement is like, um, what is Nike's mission statement? Just do it right. It's supposed to be inspiring something that they absolutely aspire to do. And the IRS's mission statement says, the IRS role is to help the large majority of compliant taxpayers with the tax law while ensuring that the minority who are unwilling to comply pay their fair share. This is directly from the IRS website. Um, I don't know about you guys, but all throughout elementary school, all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, all throughout college, um, I was never educated on tax law, on taxes, how to file taxes, what taxes were. I mean, I didn't even know what my what tax brackets were and how do I know what tax bracket I fall on? So if you guys were all educated, you know, then then kudos to you guys. But this is this was not, unfortunately, um, I think they fell short in educating me. So I therefore had to educate myself. So I start a business even if you don't own a business. Well, I'm just gonna say, what if you know you could buy Apple AirPods? and a MacBook or a PC, camera equipment, a desk, an espresso machine, right? We just bought an espresso machine. And what if you could take your wife, your family, your friends out to dinner, and you could go practice your hobby with friends, you go golfing, you go snowboarding, travel to Cancun, enjoy some nice, nice stay at Airbnb. Um, and you put this all on business credit cards, you get rewards, you never have to worry about utilization affecting your credit score. Um, and you're doing all this under your business. Right, so those expenses could actually offset your taxable income, which would increase your refund check. And I know I used to look forward to refund checks all the time. Um, and obviously, I'm joking around, but like, should I keep going? Or are these pretty good reasons to start a business? And so I get into it more. But now that a lot of you have businesses, or if you're looking to start a business, um, and it's under an LLC, a sole proprietor, right? Even a partnership, it gets a little more tricky in those circumstances. But last year, 
a lot of you guys probably um, either bought the store or you guys started your business. So let's just say last year you, you know, you're, you lost $10,000 because you hadn't even started your business yet. And so on your LLC or your sole proprietor, you would put a loss of $10,000 and on your income, your personal income, you would, let's say you made a hundred thousand. So now you would do a hundred thousand minus 10,000. Your new, your new taxable income becomes $90,000. So that immediately drops you some more. And then obviously that'll increase your tax refund, which is honestly that, that blew my mind when I found that out. So my suggestion, right. On that case is a lot of your personal expenses, right? Like I just bought my wife a laptop in December for Christmas. That's an office supply, right? I need that for work. And now you can, it's my second laptop or my second device that I'll use 100% for business. So it becomes a 100% write-off in that sense. If you're only going to use it 25% of the time, it becomes a 25% write-off. We bought an espresso machine because that is office supplies for my office, right? Um, so there's different ways you have to get strategic. And I'm going to get into exactly like some of those uh, strategies, but these are those benefits that you get for being a business owner. And all I did was create a business, right. And just adjusted the expense category from personal to business. Now there's a way to do this correctly. So I'm not telling you to go and cheat. Um, you can't expense one, all, all of your meals, right. Um, we'll go into that in more detail, but just trying to teach you guys, or at least bring more awareness so that you know, what's possible. I'm not going to get, I can't go through every single possible thing. All right. So here's another slightly advanced reason. And let me just check if I have any questions here. I'm not telling you to cheat, but don't tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, business credit cards. And I know some of you have already started looking into this. Christian and Steve recommended the Amex Platinum which I had gotten for, uh, for myself and ended up getting $50,000 in 0% business credit. And that's, that's basically not, it's kind of like free money only if, as long as you pay it back and you use it to invest. Um, but there is no, and I'm going to go into the, the benefits of business credit, but I just want to say that there's, there's no taxes on debt. And what I mean by that is if you pull all the cash out from the credit card, you know, you pull all $50,000 out, now it's cash in your bank. And there's ways to do this. Um, you don't get taxed on that money, right? And that's the, that's the part that's pretty crazy, that you don't actually get taxed on that money because you, you made an expense with your credit card, but now you have the cash. And I think that's a huge difference. Um, and then just think about, I mean, I did that in, let's say, three days. It took me three days to get access to $50,000 as opposed to having to figure out how to always profit $50,000. But even if you profit $50,000 and try to invest that, you're going to get taxed on that 50 grand. So, and I'm going to go into more, more benefits of the business credit card side. Um, any questions? I'm going to leave it open right now. Any questions on these on like starting a business, um, even if you don't own a business, just this like beginner part. Even if you have questions on, hey, what could I possibly write off? I know we got some CPAs on here too, so they will keep me honest. Hey, Fernando, I have a quick question. For What's this up? type of stuff, would you recommend people doing like an LLC or would a sole proprietor work just fine? A sole proprietor is going to work just fine until you um, and two different reasons what I would consider an LLC. One, if your business can actually get sued. So there's a lot of businesses where um, like if real estate, right? If you own property, put that in an LLC. Yeah. Um, so there's different businesses. Like if you think you can actually get sued, use an LLC. It protects the rest of your assets. It protects your personal assets. Can't go after your car if something goes wrong. Um, that's number one. But if you're like starting a consulting business, um, e-commerce, uh, e-commerce, you actually do use an LLC, but I'll explain because that's not uh, reason number two, when you're, when you're making, like when you're actually turning a profit, you're going to want to do something with that LLC to get access to more deductions. So you're, you know, with an e-commerce business, you could be making 50 grand, hundred grand, right? It keeps going up and up depending on uh, your availability to credit. 
but you want an LLC in that case because it's going to give you more access to deductions without getting into the details. So hopefully that helps you out. In yeah, understanding. yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, there we go. Zach's over here. Yep, Zach's dropping knowledge. Personal credit and check first. So to get access to those business credit cards, 700 plus, perfect. Five personal cards, 20K and revolving credit on your personal cards. If you guys want to check the comments. Um, and then that'll get you set up for 50K plus. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then there's ways to apply. All right. Let's go. Benefits of business credit. And Zach, yeah, you can hold me accountable here. So if you have, like me, if I have that $50,000 in business credit, I can use it to invest. I can take that 50 grand and put it into, into actually working capital into my investments, get my returns, pay off the credit card, you know, rinse and repeat, do it again. Um, you can use it to build your business. So man, when I first started as an entrepreneur, the first six months, I made a solid $300. So I, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And I needed to fund my business with credit cards. I got into $20,000 of business credit card debt. Um, luckily, that didn't necessarily mess up my credit score. And I'll explain why, because it, it doesn't actually report to your personal credit. Um, use it to get bonus points to fly and travel for free. Like I just did this. We pulled the 50 grand out of the credit card. We got access to 150,000 bonus points. And now we're, my wife and I are both flying to Utah and back for free in that sense, um, using it to get cash back on purchases. So everybody on e in e-commerce and drop shipping, like this is the best part. I had a 5% cash back credit card. I was buying from Amazon. I think last year I made another three or four grand just from the cash back. Um, Costco, like if we're using Costco gas a lot, but that does, I think, 4% cash back, and they have a business credit card that you can use. It does not report on your personal credit score. So this is huge, and this is huge for two reasons. The first reason is if you have a $10,000 credit limit on your personal card and you max that out, your credit score is going to be ruined because you're maxing out your credit card. If you have a $10,000 credit card on your business, and you max that out, they don't report that to your personal credit score unless you actually stop making payments. And then obviously that's messing up your personal credit score. Um, there are some credit cards that like, I would not get a Discover card. I would not get a Capital One business card or a Discover uh, business card because those would report. Right. This is the cool part. You can wipe off business credit inquiries without closing the card down. So what do I mean by that? You know how everybody, you do, uh, you do a hard pull. If you're doing a mortgage, if you're getting a mortgage, they do a hard pull. If you're getting a car, they do a hard pull on your credit. If you're applying for a credit card, personal card, they do a, a hard pull on your credit. If you're applying for a business credit card, they do a hard pull on your credit. With a personal credit card, if you apply and get denied, you can actually call and get that inquiry removed. Um, just say it's fraud and, and they'll remove it. But if you, if it, if it's open, if you apply for a personal credit card and it's and they open it, you can't call and get that removed because it'll be a danger of them closing down that card. Now on the business side, if you open up a business credit card and you get denied, you can call, get that removed. If you open up a business credit card and it gets opened, you can also call and get that removed. And Zach, am I, how am I doing over here so far, man? Is that, is that right? Zach's my, you call Experian, um, you call... Yeah, sweet, spot on. Call Experian. Most of the time, it's usually Experian. It depends on what they pull, but you call Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax, and you get those uh, removed, which is crazy, right? It's freaking sick. Um, okay. And then you reapply for more business credit after wiping inquiries. Like this is the rinse and repeat model without actually dinging your credit score. So, you know, I've got over 750 credit score. I'm now, you know, going through funding, going through applying for different business credit cards. And when I apply for one, two or three cards, I wipe all those inquiries out. I can leverage the credit. I can go and apply for more business credit because uh, my personal, my credit score is still good and I don't have those inquiries. So that is the strategy. Let me see if you get the business credit card approved. Do you call them and tell them it's fraud still? Um, I have the phone numbers if you want them. Yes. And 
yeah, no, that's, that's what you do, man. You, you are the person to validate your credit. Uh, there's a law that says, you know, the only the person whose credit it is can actually tell them the legitimacy of their credit file. And there's a lot of different ways to get these removed. Um, I personally, if they're, if it's easy, just inquiry removals, I'll call and, and get them removed myself. But this past year I got, um, I got a collections removed. I had a hospital collections on my credit report since January of last year, which messed up my credit score and was able to get that removed after paying. Um, actually I, I was working with Zach's team. So uh, I, I, work, I recommend Zach. Um, I was also, I've worked with another team, Jack McColl, his team also helped me out in removing some of these uh, negative items. And then, yeah, Christian, if you want to drop the numbers in there for Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax, that'd be dope. Will do. All right. Um, can transfer credit from one business to another? Um, this one is, and Zach, I, 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 I have not fully done this myself, but one of my buddies told me that if you have an Amex card on, on one business and you have an Amex card in another business, that you can actually transfer some of that credit um, into the other one. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but you can actually, like, let's say you have 10,000 10, and 10,000, two different businesses. Can you take 5,000 from one and put it into the other? Um, I know for sure for American Express that having a credit card with one, of, with one company gives you more availability for credit on the other, which is pretty cool. Yeah, see, Amex does allow you to do that, which is sick. So if you get a 0%, okay, here's the trick with American Express. You get a 0% Amex cash blue for one business, for business A today. And then a year from now, and you get 0% for 12 months. A year from now, that 0% card is going to go away. And so then you open up another business or you have another business and you open up another 0% Amex card, but both under your name, two different businesses, um, you can now transfer the credit that you had on that first one into your second one and then essentially doubling up your credit limit on that new 0% card. So ton of crazy different hacks um, when it comes to this stuff. And there's this last one. One of my friends, Crystal, just did this as well. She did this yesterday. She couldn't believe that it worked. And I learned this from Christian, um, another call that happened with you guys. Um, I think, uh, what's his name? Soto, Eric Soto. Yeah. So he, yeah. he had recommended this manufactured spending and, and Christian was always posting about it, but it's when, and she just, my friend just did it at Sam's club. You, she bought $4,000 worth of stuff and she went to Sam's club and she said, Hey, can you put $3,800 on my credit card? on the card that she wanted the points on and can you put $200 on my debit card? So when she bought the items, she put, made sure she put 3,800 on her credit card and 200 on her debit card. And then two or three days later, she went back to the customer service and said, I'd like to return all these items. And they said, okay, well, you have two cards on file. Which one would you like it back to? And then she handed them her debit card. They put all $4,000 back on her debit card. Now she got all the points with her credit card and got all the cash onto her debit card and you know they didn't necessarily have to lose money or pay a fee for that and then what does she do she now just pays off the credit card with her um, with her debit card with her checking account that that money went to so it's called manufactured spending you manufacture the uh, the spending all right i want to see if anybody else how can you remove an inquiry if you actively use the card so since it's a business inquiry when they remove it, your business is tied to your EIN, which is an employer identification number. And that's different from your SSN, which is your social security number. So Shinal Kumar, to answer your question, if it's a personal credit card, um, then they could close your card down. So I do not recommend doing this for personal credit cards, but if it's a business credit card, then since it's tied to two different identification numbers, right? And this is your personal credit report tied to your social security number that when you remove that business inquiry, they're not going to shut down your business credit card. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, let me know in the comments if that doesn't make sense. 
um, how do you convert credit to cash? So one of the ways that I shared was that manufactured spending. When you go to Sam's Club, you put $3,800 on your credit card, you put $200 on your debit card, and then you go back in two days and you just have them put all the cash back onto your debit card. So Jay, that's, that's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it, um, I'm actually doing this with another friend. I'm sending him an invoice on PayPal or sending him an invoice uh, with Stripe. And then he is paying that invoice, comes into my bank account. He obviously is paying a fee. He's paying like three or 4%. Um, sometimes some people charge 5% for the service fee. And then I'm sending him back all the cash. And that's the second way to do it. It's called liquidating your credit cards. And you obviously have to do that one with somebody you trust so that you make sure they send you back the money. Um, can you send money through Cash App using a credit card without a fee? I think usually Cash App Venmo is like, yeah, 2.9% plus 30 cents. That's typical with a lot of like PayPal. With, when using a credit card with PayPal, maybe Cash App, QuickBooks. Um, that's, that's pretty typical. Cool. Any questions on benefits of business credit? And I want to, I want to, what do I want to say? I want to, I want to emphasize that you don't need to have a business in order to get access to all these benefits. Like this is the crazy part, right? You can create what's called a DBA or a doing business as, or a fictitious business name, and you can get an EIN um, that to create a DBA is $50. To get an EIN is free and that's all you need. Those two things, and you obviously need to be a US citizen or there's other complications, maybe not, but that's all you need. And then you can start applying for business credit cards and you can start getting business checkings accounts. How do you report manufacturers spending on your taxes? Probably don't. You probably, it's debt. Um, you, you would not necessarily, because it, it depends on your strategy, but you probably wouldn't. Um, I honestly, I to be determined. I'm, I'm not, I can't even, I can't fully speak on the topic yet. Um, this is going to be my first year uh, using a legitimate bookkeeper. So I, I can only say what I did and I'm not recommending you do it. But in the previous times that I've done this and I didn't have a legitimate bookkeeper, like I, I don't think I did. But now that I have a legitimate bookkeeper, she may bring it up to me and say, Hey, like, what, what's this, what's going on here? How do I do this? And that's a conversation I'm going to have with her. So Christian, can you speak to that? Do you know how your tax guy has been doing it? Well, for the manufacturer point, spending. Yeah. For the points or the cashback that you get, that's not taxable. Right. That's not taxable. What about yeah. the actual cash that goes back into your, um, into your bank? So you can have it as like product sold. And then when you pay your credit card, you can have it as cost of goods um, expense. And I mean, we have a couple of CPAs here. So that's that's what I've been doing. Just uh, like making a sale and then cost of goods and the same amount. So it balances out zero. Got it. Yeah. And, that, and that's the way I do it for li liquidating. When I'm liquidating a card, if I invoice somebody, let's say 10,000, and then they, they pay me, it counts as revenue to me, but then I just send it back to them. And so that becomes like a payment back to them. So as long as I am, I'm calculating the, the cash coming in and the cash going out, it ends up washing out. So it's the same, the same thing that you're saying as well. If using Amex send account, no fee, if using the card, a fee is applied. Ah, look at that, Amex send account. Do you know the limit, Zach, on that, on the Amex send account? Feel free to unmute too, if you have, if you can, if you want to. Yeah, it's uh, whatever your credit limit is. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute button. So you can, you can send whatever is available to send on your, your credit limit. And you set that no up. Way. App. And I just send it to, um, I've sent it to a friend or send it to, or you can't send it to your own bank account. Maybe that looks fishy. Um, you can, you can send it. Yeah, you can send it to a friend. Uh, so typically what I do with cards, if needed, um, I can Venmo a trusted friend and then they'll actually just send that back to me. No fees all the way around. So you think I could do this with $50,000? Um, you're probably going to trigger a, a response yeah. from Venmo as well as American Express if you're, 
um, taxes maybe don't match up with it. I just had for the first Mm -hmm. time in 13 months, my first Amex card going through the process of liquidation actually require a financial review. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a form that Amex requests um, from the IRS to verify your taxable income. And then at that point, they can actually make a decision on keeping that card open, um, Mm -hmm. removing the limit that's on it and possibly reducing it um, or closing the account down in full. When this occurs, if you've liquidated the cash out and it is a 0% card, the lender does have to honor that 0% and allow you to Mm -hmm. make payments on it. At the end of 12 months, hopefully whatever investment you've made, you've made back the original credit limit, you pay down the principal, more times than not, the lender will allow you to actually keep that card open and will reinstate the account. Cool. Due to risk management, risk mitigation, they get a little cold feet when the, the full yeah. card is liquidated. No, I, I can imagine that right now. Um, okay, no, it makes sense. And yeah, I think probably Venmo has some limits. So just to recognize that. I, don't, I personally haven't done more than like 4,000 on Venmo. I've done like, you know, up to 10,000 with PayPal, and so just leverage different, there's different tools out there, basically. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Doc, for that. All right, guys. Any other questions before I move on? Uh, most cards give you about three months to hit bonus. Yep. When I send cash back by invoicing the payment, it would be considered gifting, correct? Uh, no, it, it can be a wash. When you send the cash back by invoicing, remember, you received you received, an, uh, sorry, you invoice somebody, you receive payment. So that's revenue. And then when you send the money back to them, it just washes. You don't necessarily have to, it, has to, it doesn't have to be a gift. It's going to wash back, you know, when each of you claim, claim it as revenue or expense. All right. The top. Cool. So if you're thinking this is all too good to be true, it is. And um, so before I explain why, and this awesome thing that I wanted to share. Um, Because the losses from your single member LLC or sole proprietor can actually offset your W2 income. So I I feel like there's zero risk when you own a business Uh, because either you own a business and make money or you own a business and claim losses that can offset your W2 income, right? Or you own a business, there's even another one, you own a business and just use it for all the credit card perks and you don't even have to claim losses or claim deductions if you don't want to worry about that. So to me, there's just, there's always a reason to have a business on paper because there's, as long as you understand how to leverage the benefits and that uh, this is straight from, I got the reference down at the bottom. Cause I know this is kind of crazy. When I first found this out, I was like, what you're saying that I can have W2 income and then I have a business and my business loses money that year, I can't offset my W-2 income so I can get a bigger refund check. Yes. Um, If you don't believe me, this is straight from down there, the reference. If your sole proprietorship operated at a loss and the number entered on line 12 of your 1040 return is negative, you can subtract it from wages or other income you earned and report all your sources of income. So they give an example. If you receive 60,000 from other sources and your business lost 15,000, The 15,000 would appear as a negative number, bringing your total income down to 45,000. This is the coolest part too. You can take your standard, right? Your standard deductions from that total income. And if you guys aren't sure what standard deductions are, it's just a, it's a deduction that the IRS gives you for being a good taxpayer. They said, Hey, you've paid us too much money during the year. We're going to, we're going to give you a standard deduction to help you out. And so you can take that on top of that loss. So just so you guys know, I'm not blowing smoke here. This is um, getting my references. Okay, it's cool. So how do you get started, right? And how do you unlock these benefits? The easiest way, and I got this, I don't know, five-step process um, to get started. And number one, you're going to create a business. And that business can either be a DBA, an LLC, or a corporation. It costs between $50 and $800 to set one of these up. If it's a DBA, it's, you know, 50 bucks. You legitimately type into Google, create a DBA in X state. So create a DBA in California. How to create a DBA in California. How to create an LLC in California. 
Uh, keep in mind that an LLC in California, to start it is maybe a hundred bucks, $125, but to maintain an LLC in California is $800. So I, that's why I recommend DBAs. Um, you can have multiple DBAs with EIN numbers and you don't have to worry about paying this $800 LLC fee. So really consider if you need the LLC or if you can live with the DBA. And that's, that's a, probably a deeper conversation for another time, but this is step one, create a business. That's it. Type in Google, how to start a business or how to start a DBA, sorry. Create an EIN, this is free. And you can have a DBA, which stands for doing business as, or a fictitious business name. You can have an EIN with a DBA and that'll give you access to your business checkings and your business credit cards. Um, I'm getting some questions in here. Yep, we got somebody in here who did a third party fast filing, 69 bucks. Um, and most cards could be better. It's just whether it be recorded. Yeah, there's, this is being recorded, so you're good. Can you have a DBA without an LLC? Yes, you can have a DBA without an LLC. That's, that's exactly my point where I would, I would even recommend if you're starting a business just to have a business and you don't feel like you're going to get sued, then just go the DBA route. And if you're, the LLC is there primarily for protection or later on when you're making over 40 or $50,000, you can do some other cool tax strategies with an LLC. But if you're just starting and you just want to start getting the benefits, a DBA is perfectly fine. And then creating that EIN, which is free. Again, type into Google how to create an EIN. All super easy. It takes less than 10 minutes. Uh, the next thing you want to do is create a DUNS number. And your DUNS number is basically your business credit score. And it's free. This is also free. So you're like basically creating a social security number for your, um, I guess, EIN and DUNS. I'm sorry, not score, social security. EIN is like your social for your business. Your DUNS is just the credit score that helps tell lenders that, um, that you're legit and that you have a good rating with them um closes down his llc's can you offset the w2 if it's only partnership llc or it's only for soul if um if it's a partnership llc it's a, it's a little more complicated so i think that's uh, out of the scope of this but talk to me afterwards and i mean darren could probably talk to you as well i think there's it might be a couple of tax guys on here all right this is a key one as well. So if to not get in trouble with the IRS, you want to show intent to turn a profit. You know, it's okay if you don't turn a profit, but you just want to show intent. So going back to a consulting business, right? If you consult for art or you consult for creating graphic designs, I mean, anything, right? Just create a Fiverr page, create an Upwork page, super low barrier to entry. You can prove, you know, change your LinkedIn profile. All this stuff is showing intent to turn a profit. And if nobody hits you up, then nobody hits you up, right? Uh, but at least you're showing that intent to turn the profit. Um, you know, you can't, you got to think if you're expensing travel to like us, when we expense our travel to Mexico, we are real estate investors and we're looking to invest in an Airbnb property in Mexico. And we have met, we actually meet with real estate agents down there and we record all of that. So if anybody were to ask, we could have the documentation that shows, no, we actually met with the real estate agent down there. We've done our research. These are the areas that we've spotted. Like you're, so yes, you are taking advantage of the system, but we're doing it intelligently. All right. Making all expenses ordinary and necessary. So what does this mean? You can't order $500 takeout to your house every night and call that ordinary necessary, right? There's gonna be some red flags. You, you actually can't even like fast food is usually not expensible if you're within like a 50 mile radius of your house. Um, you, you should not do that. So there's just some, some do's and don'ts when it comes to all this and red flags and all that. Um, just wanna let you guys know that. So yeah, so if you listen to Zach there, that was exactly the, um, yep, yep. That's exactly one of the hacks you can do. I have an LLC as an escort, but this is definitely advanced. Um, oh, peace out, Zach. Pleasure, man. Thanks for being on. All right. The other great news, all this, if this is kind of 
getting you nervous and you're like, whoa, ordinary and necessary. I got to track all my expenses and I got to show an intent to turn a profit and it's kind of turning you off and you're kind of being like, this is too much for me. The good news is you can still use the business credit card perks without the risk of the IRS. Okay. How do you do that? You just don't claim the deductions. So you can get all the business credit card perks that I listed in that previous one. And right here, you guys can feel free to take a screenshot, take a photo of this. Um, I'll leave it up here for five seconds. So you guys can still leverage all of this without having to actually claim deductions. So when I talk about why everyone should have a business, even if you don't own a business, it's because like one of the hugest benefits is because of the business credit aspect to it. And yeah, I just want more people to have access to this. Uh, I hate when people are stuck in consumer debt because it does affect their credit score. And if you get stuck with business credit card debt, you can open up another business credit card because your personal credit score is not affected, right? So many regular people are getting screwed over because their personal credit cards are being raised up in utilization. And it's frustrating. Um, I'm super passionate about helping people get out of credit card debt and into business credit cards. Now, I don't recommend getting into more consumer debt just with business credit cards. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, just trying to share that, yeah, this is, this is like the bare minimum that people can leverage a business for. Yeah, nice hire. What's up, man? I um, <laughs> appreciate you being on, dude. All right, there are more benefits depending on how you claim deductions. Um, that's for personal. So Hiram, that's a good, good question there, right? People are always wondering, you know, is there a benefit versus itemized, itemized versus standard? That is only if you're not, if you don't have a business, right? So i um, separating the two. Okay. To, to answer that question. Uh, thanks, man. So Hiram, to answer the question, uh, you asked me about standard deductions or itemized deductions. And let's just say you did not have a business. Okay. If you did not have a business at the end of the year, we all have the choice to pick either. We can take a standard deduction with our taxes and the IRS gives us, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 18,000, whatever, 25,000. If you're married filing jointly, you get certain standard deduction, which most, most people will always take because you're getting a good sizable chunk to help you. And if you don't have a business, again, you have to choose between standard or itemized. Most of the time, if you don't have a business, the standard deduction is going to be the best thing to choose. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're most likely just getting the standard deduction, which is good. That helps you. And people then think, all right, well, if I get a, if I have open up a business, now do I have to take the itemized deductions? Like what happens then? And the answer is no. These are... Um, you can take all your itemized deductions in the business. This is the crazy part. Hiram, check it out. So when you're going out for meals with your hubby and it's a business discussion and you're paying for office supplies like this microphone or you're paying for lights, you're paying for a laptop or a Mac, right? These are all office supplies. Um, Section 179A of the IRS code says that you can deduct this types of stuff because um, it's ordinary and necessary. You need it. I need it to operate this business with you guys, right? And all of that stuff gets, it happens within the business. So then that I'm getting deductions in my business and my personal income is totally different. At the end of the year, I bring the two together. Okay. Personal is reporting to what's called a 1040 and uh, my LLC or my sole proprietor, my business here, this is reporting in schedule C, but they're both in my final income tax return. That was super in depth. I hope I didn't mess up because um, <laughs> I'm not the tax professional. I'm seriously talking because I've done a ton of research on my own and I've battled with the right people um, to the grave. But Hiram, did that answer your question, man? Are you there? All right. Yeah, Rafa just shared a link on the standard deductions. All right, cool, guys. So... Create a business, get an AA, get it done, create your intent to turn a profit, make all expenses ordinary and necessary. Um, in the worst case scenario, by the way, if you try to claim an expense and the IRS doesn't like it, 
they just tell you to remove it, right? The absolute worst case scenario is they say, hey, this doesn't count. So then you just pay taxes on it. And so what's the catch, right? People are always like, dude, this sounds way too good to be true. How much work is involved? Um, who do I need to sign my soul over to? Uh, what's involved? And it's very straight up with you guys. This does take education. Like you're going to have to do the research on your own to just to Hiram's point, right? Figure out and start learning about standard deductions, itemized deductions, business deductions. And then you're going to have to start trying to keep track. Well, what do you want to classify as the business deduction? What do you want to put on your business credit card? If you wanted to actually start claiming deductions, you have to be smarter. For the whole first year, um, I had to keep track of my own books using QuickBooks Online. I even hired a VA um, to help me as well. Her name is Lori. She's, she's awesome. And she's, I still work with her uh, on other things. But it's up to you. Right. You're the business owner. And so you are you are having a different level of responsibility if you want to claim deductions. You're going to have to be able to show receipts for when you go out to dinners. You're going to have to be able to show intent to turn a profit if you want to claim these deductions. And it's going to take education, you know, getting you just have to start interviewing different tax strategists to help you out. And yeah, if you like consuming information, you like learning, if you're on this call, obviously, then you do. Yeah, and surround yourself with good people, which Christian, Steve, Zach, uh, Rafa, Darren, I mean, there's so many people here, Juan, that I've just had crazy good relationships with, and very knowledgeable, uh, Jim, Jim Sanchez is on, Jim should share his, uh, his Instagram handle, you guys should all, all go follow Jim, um, it's going to take some work, so you'll need to accumulate the knowledge, either personal research, YouTube, Google, or investing in yourself, paying people for access to their information, buying courses to continuously learn all this stuff. Um, a lot of you guys are already doing this, investing in yourself. And you'll need eventually when you're, if you're making 40 grand a profit, you need to start looking for a solid tax strategist, uh, somebody to help you with asset protection if you own property, because there's, I made the most I ever made last year and I'm going to pay the least I've ever paid in taxes, which blew my mind. I remember when I first met with a tax strategist, which is tax strategist is different than the CPA who does your W-2 um, income. These are the people that will help you create different entities in different states to maximize your tax savings legally. So they're not doing anything illegal. I want to make that, I want to make sure that I'm making that statement correctly. There's legal ways, um, tax strategies, so that when you start bringing in a good amount of income, you, you are able to maximize your deductions to drop your taxable income as much as you can. And trying to, so from my end, without getting too much into it, you know, um, we have corporations and LLCs out of Wyoming or out of Georgia. And I only have one LLC in California and that's uh, an LLC tax as an S corp. And there's ways that they all kind of talk to each other. But again, it's all legal. We're not doing anything illegal. Let me check out here. And Jim said, drop it, Jim. <laughs> uh, do I recommend opening up a PO box for business address? I don't recommend a PO box. I would just get a virtual business address. Um, you can use iPostal. So just type in you know, virtual business address. It, it is a PO box without it being a PO box. And I would only, honestly, I, I don't really recommend it. If you live in California and everything's in California, I'd only recommend it. If you start doing these creative strategies where you're opening up LLCs and remote States, then um, you got to, I would do you use Wyoming LLC for anonymity. Yes. I do use Wyoming for anonymity. You got it. And let's see if I'm interested in getting a loan for a second or third home. And if I were a bank and see that you have a business and are always at loss or slow growth, wouldn't that be a high risk, even though you're asking for a personal loan and not a business. So here, I'm, when you get into the business world of real estate um, and you actually are turning a profit on your real estate property. So there's, there's a few ways I'm going to answer that. The best way that I can answer that is the way that I would do things. There's something called a DSCR loan. Forget what it stands for, but basically if your revenue that you bring in through the property is 1.2x greater than your mortgage, 
then you can get a loan for as it's operating as a business. And I think you only have to put like 15% down or so. Um, and that's freaking awesome because, you know, Airbnbs, pad splits, all these things can bring in a, a ton more income and you never have to worry about them checking your personal credit. You never have to worry about them checking your bank statements or any of that thing. So there are other creative ways to get access to, uh, to a home uh, to, to purchase the property. There's, there's that one. Uh, you can also do the 10% investment property. Try to try to do that one. Uh, if you're a bank and see that you have a business, um, yeah, there. I don't think that would affect you. They they wouldn't necessarily ask for your your business statements. I've I've never had that happen to me. Travelingmailbox.com. I haven't heard of that, Jay. And yeah, so Jim uses iPostal. I use iPostal as well. Uh, right. Debt service coverage ratio (DSC) loan. Right. That one's it. Hiram, if you want to look into that, man. And Nowadays, if you're buying property, you the, the the days of owning property and only making like a hundred or three hundred dollars a month is um, I think those are over. I think we have enough information now where you everybody should be profiting at least six hundred dollars per home. There, there's enough out there for sure. Um, I mean, the ones that that Rafa, I would follow Rafa as well. He's into uh, pad splits. Him and I own, or my wife, we own pad splits out of Georgia. And those produce on bad months, $1,500 a month in net profit. And then on great months, like $3,000. And I even think comparing that to Airbnb properties could be low. I know a lot of friends own Airbnbs in the Smokies or in Joshua Tree, and they're just killing it. So look into that. I mean, there's a ton of ways to uh, produce income. A lot of good people out there that are happy to share the info. Is there a way to open a business in another tax-friendly state if the business will take place in California? So it depends if it's passive or if it's active. E-commerce and you're opening it up with Christian and Steve, that's passive. You can open that up in another state and then you will still possibly need, uh, I mean, again, this is where you need a tax strategist. But for me, all of my e-commerce stores were passive and they operated in a different state out of Wyoming. I didn't have them operating in California. What part of Georgia, Atlanta? Atlanta is the pad split, yeah. Raf, if you want to drop your Instagram, dude, then they can ping you about pad splits. Um, Atlanta, Fulton County. Yep, that's where our house is. All right, guys. So the last thing, good news. Um, I have one last giveaway. And I appreciate all you guys coming on. So the last one is just a one-hour financial strategy consultation and business chat um, while I help you get your business off the ground. And this is going to be, a, you know, if you have a business you want to start later this year or as soon as possible, I will help you get all of that off the ground and help you structure all that. I will bring in my tax strategist onto the call. I mean, I can I loop in as many resources as I can to help you get started. Um, this is how you win. So I got a quiz. Three questions. What I shared so far. Top three answers in each question will get entered into a raffle after this and we'll have a winner. The more times you answer correctly and in the top three, the more opportunities you have to win. Uh, I didn't want to just do the first person to answer because who knows who has laggy internet. So I'm saying like the top three, uh, I'll take for these three questions, I'll take the top three first answers and then I'll enter you guys into a raffle. Does that sound pretty fair? Sweet, sweet. All right, guys, let's go. You ready? Thanks, Carissa. All right, here it goes. True or false? Starting easy. <laughs> I haven't even released the question, dude. Luis, that's not that. All right, Luis is disqualified. All right, ready? Business credit card utilization reports your personal credit report. True or false? Oh, shoot. <laughs> all right, we got to see. Um, all right, after Luis, we got um, false Claire. J and no sweet. All right. Hey, babe, are you still on? I don't even know if, if my wife is still on. Christian, can you, uh, yeah, can here. you, oh, you're there, babe. Can you jot down Claire, J and Noel? Noel. Oh man. I don't want to say no. If it's Noel, I'm sorry. All right. So that was the first one. All right. Ready guys. Question number two, 
which of these don't belong on the business deductions? And by the way, Chanel, babe, the Chanel is the, the last one there. So just make sure Luis doesn't cheat again. All right. Ah, no. <laughs> okay, there we go. Which of these don't belong on business deductions? Espresso machine, dinner meal, family groceries, airfare to Cancun, answer does not exist. Oh, man. You guys are all good, dude. Family groceries, you got it. Espresso, Eli, just so you know, man, the espresso machine is an office supply. My wife and I just got one the other day, and it is a business deduction. Groceries, that is the correct answer. Sweet. All right, so we got Lorenzo, Luis is wrong, Ivan, you're right, and Jay. Uh, no, sorry, not Jay. Um, Liz. So Lorenzo, Ivan, and Liz. <laughs> Do you need to eat and run your business? Yeah, but family. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys, last one. The following types of businesses can help offset my W-2 income. The following types of businesses can help offset my W-2 income. These are business entities, I should say. A single member LLC, a single proprietorship with an EIN, an LLC taxes an S-corp, a C-corporation. This is, this is a harder one. Let's see how people are going. Right, but you, at LLC, DBA. Wait, the following types of business can help offset. You got to answer though, if it's A through G. We got a G, we got an E. We got Gs, all of the above. <laughs> all right, so yeah, this one's, a, this one's, we started getting some wrong ones here. Okay, so, um, E, yep, you got E is the right answer. So if you're an LLC and you're only a single member LLC, then yes, right? Then that can offset your W-2 income. If you're a sole proprietorship and you have an EIN, yes, that will help offset your W-2 income. If you're an LLC taxed as an S corporation, an S corporation has to file their own set of their own returns. So once you become an S corporation, even though you're an LLC, you're now going to have business tax returns and personal tax returns. And in that instance, all of your deductions and everything will go under the S corporation tax returns and it won't flow into your personal tax returns. So it's not C. A C corporation is an entirely different entity. My C Corp, I have a, we have a C corporation, Amy and I, and it's out of Wyoming. Um, you can't, you can't really find it. Like nobody, even if I told you the name of my C corporation, when you look it up, you won't know who actually owns it. And that's part of the benefit of having it out of Wyoming because it's anonymous. And so a C corporation also files its own set of books, its own tax returns. And so that's that one you can't do either. So the answer is A and B. The answer is E. So I'm not sure who, who that was there. Uh, let's go. One of three feels like he's his feet. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess I'm just going to pay for this consultation. <laughs> Gage, you're, you're already a client, dude. I'll help you out, man. All right. Okay, guys, this is everything, man. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm super excited that all of you hopped off. I am hopped, hopped on. I guess I'll hop off after this. And any, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I promised my wife the rest of the night. So I've got time for a few questions. Uh, maybe like a, if somebody has one question or two, and then I'll probably hop off. Christian, Steve, thanks for, um, thanks for having me as well. I honestly, I, I do plan to have um, a few of these calls um, because I, I think it's time to share. I mean, Steve, Christian, I think you guys agree that once you have information, the next thing, the next level um, to leadership is like, well, how, how much of an impact can you have on other people's lives? 
And uh, I've definitely seen that from you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, Darren's, Darren's a good guy. Uh, if you have some questions, um, he's been great. Um, I love my, my nighttime conversations with Darren when it comes to tax strategy. Uh, thank you. Did we have a question in there? Sorry, guys. Can I convert a DBA to an LLC down the road? Yes. Yeah, you can. You can convert a DBA to an LLC. All right, guys, that's it. Any uh, Anything you wanted to say, Christian or Steve? No, just great information. It's always good to go back to the basics, you know? A lot of people don't know why you should own a business. And I feel like you gave out a lot of reasons why you should. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, man. All right, guys, thank you for being on. Thanks, Thanks for Fernando. Fernando. Thank you.